Hi guys and welcome to this army painting tutorial for Space Wolves. I wanted to do a little bit of a homage to one of my favourite hobby memories. Uh, when I first got into the hobby I remember reading this article by uh, Kim Cyberg about this incredible Space Wolves army he's done. So this is back from 1995 and I think it just looks incredible. So when I wanted to do a, a scheme for some 40k wolves for this video, I wanted to use that as a little bit of inspiration uh, of how you can make a brighter coloured space wolves look really, really cool. So whilst it's not by no means a direct copy, uh, I just wanted to take a quick minute to, to talk about it and, uh, you know, just re reminisce a little bit uh, and enjoy it. So it's White Dwarf 185 if you uh, you want to check it out. Anyway, let's get on with painting our wolf. Over a black primer, I'm going to spray a GW Rust Grey through the airbrush. I've left the two arms unattached at this point, just so it's going to be easier for me to paint the shoulder pads in a different colour. Now I've thinned the Rust Grey down. It's a layer paint, so it's already quite dilute, but I probably thinned it down just over one to one with thinner. And I want to build up the layers of grey on here. That's why I'm thinning it down so much, so I can get a few different tones. In the same way as we do when we pre-highlight the miniature, I'm just thinking about my light source and making sure it makes sense across the model. When you're painting grey, you don't need to pre-highlight or pre-shade, you can just go straight in with the colours. So I've chosen that angle that I think is going to look the best from. And then I'm choosing my light source coming in from the right hand side of the screen as we look at it. And you can see I'm on about, I don't know, the third layer here. And we're getting a more solid colour where the light's hitting it. And a nice little transition. For the first highlight, I'm using GW Fenrisian Grey. I thought it'd be fun to use the GW Wolf Grey, see what we could do with it. It's a layer paint as well, so again it doesn't need very much thinning at all slightly less than 50-50 for this one because I wanted the layers to be a little bit more opaque. I'm just focusing on exactly the same areas as I did before but a slightly tighter spread of paint. You see already we're getting that slightly blue hue which we associate with 40k space walls. I'm spraying at 20 PSI and I'm using our signature series Cotter Paint Infinity airbrush. It's worth taking your time at this stage. With Space Marines that armour is such an integral part of the model. Particularly for army painting I always pick one or two things to focus on and for Marines it's always going to be the armour. That is looking pretty cool. Just make sure we're drawing attention to that head area and that all those lights make sense across the model. And then a final highlight, I've mixed in a little bit of GW Ulthwang Grey, again another layer paint. This is mixed in 50-50 with the Fenrisian Grey and thinned 50-50 with normal airbrush thinner. And you can see the difference this final highlight makes. We lose some of that blue. It's still there, but we lose how much of it is there. We've gone to this lovely bright light grey, which I think is a nice nod to those uh, amazing walls that Kim painted all those years ago. So just checking those light sources. Take your time. If you muck it up, just load up the previous colour, fix your mistake and come back. For the shoulder pads, I wanted to stick to the nostalgia theme, I guess, and give us some really nice bright primary colours, uh, reds and yellows. So the right one, I'm going to do red. So for this, I've just got Tamiya flat white and I'm pre-shading straight over the, the grey. You'll notice I kind of avoided the shoulder pads in the previous stages. I'm just building up the white, very, very thin layers. I've heavily thinned this, probably three or four drops of thinner to paint and always using Tamiya thinner with the Tamiya paints. 
And for the left shoulder pad, uh, this is gonna be yellow. So I don't wanna leave any black uh, showing through creating gray, because that's just gonna desaturate the yellow. It won't help me with my shading. So I'm just giving it a nice solid coat of white on this side. For the red, I'm just spraying over GW Contrast Paint Blood Angels Red, Thin 5050, about three layers. You can see here that pre-shade's given us all the shading we need. I've done it with a chainsaw too. For the yellow, I'm using GW Contrast Paint Eandon Yellow. I'm using both of these because they're nice, super bright, really saturated colors, exactly the look I'm going for. Now to shade the yellow, I'm just using Citadel uh, Seraphim Sepia Wash, just neat in the airbrush, not thinned at all. I'm just hitting it from below. Add a little bit of shading. So you can see we've got some dark areas, but it's not desaturated, it's a nice color. Once they're on the model with the gray, you can already see where we're going with this guy. Now hitting him all over with Vallejo Polyurethane Gloss Varnish in preparation for the decal stage and the pin washing. So to pin wash, I'm gonna use Payne's Gray. Uh, this is Winsor & Newton Artist Oil Color, is the brand. And I'm thinning it down with Winsor & Newton Sansed Oil Thinner. I've done a whole video on pin washing, so if you wanna know more about it, you can check it out there. I've put the link in the top. And I've chosen the Payne's Gray rather than black or brown or something like that, because I want that slightly blue uh, tint to the model, that, that very uh, archetypal Space Wolf color. I was a bit impatient while I was waiting for the oil to dry uh, and I had to unfortunately because I was using these really old transfers uh, I found an old sheet I thought it'd be cool uh, I had to give them two coats of microsol uh, so while I was waiting for that to dry I went round and started to black out all the other details uh, I used Vallejo model color for that and for the final finish once all that was dry I'm using a three to one mix of ammo by MIG uh, ultra matte varnish with one drop of gloss varnish, so three drops of the matte to one drop of the gloss. Now this is a completely optional stage. Because I had to paint the trim of the shoulder pads in, and I had to do that by brush, I thought I'd take the opportunity just to add a little bit more uh, brush highlights on the model. I would do this across an army because I think it's worth it, but I also appreciate that perhaps if you're on a time frame or whatever, limited time frame, you might choose to, to skip this stage. So I've started out with our lighter grey, so Fenrisian grey. Adding in the highlights just where I would with the airbrush and then blending them in. And also at this stage, I'm taking the opportunity to do some edge highlighting. Now I add a little bit of the Ulthuan grey into the Fenrisian grey and I'll do some more edge highlighting. I'd certainly recommend you do this step, even if you don't do the previous step. This clean, bright look really benefits from sharp edge highlights. Just take your time with them. Um, these Primaris are actually really um, forgiving for edge highlighting. It's quite easy to get to all of the edges. But it really helps with definition. It certainly helps to sell that final effect. Really bummed out those decals didn't work though. Goodness knows how old the sheet was. Probably 15, 20 years, something like that. But we can fudge it. We can make them fit in. I've sped this up 300%, uh, I think, to give you an idea of how long you should be expecting to spend when you're edge highlighting. Like this is a, a tedious step, but it is worth it. For the silver parts on the model, I'm just base coating them with GW Iron Warriors. Nothing special. We spent a lot of time on the armor. We need to get some of that time back now on the rest of the model if we try and stick to that army painting idea. For the gold parts of the model, I'm base coating using Scale 75 Decayed Metal. And to highlight, I wanted that real bright gold, so I'm using uh, GW Retributor Gold. It's one of my favorite golds. 
uh, to use. I don't use it very often, but when I want that super bright, regal, just warm gold colour, it's a really nice paint to work with. You do need to shake it up quite a lot. I'm base coating it with GW Rhinox Hide. And then a quick highlight, because I've still got the light greys on my palette, I've just mixed a little bit of the light greys into the Rhinox Hide and I'll give them a quick edge highlight. One of the downsides to the edge highlighting is if you're going to do it on one part of the model, you kind of need to do it on all parts of the model. So again, just trying to be neat. And just thinking about where we want to draw people's eye towards. You can see the pelt that's on his helmet. I base coated that using the Ulthuan Grey just because again I had it on my palette, it's a light colour. And I've used GW Contrast Paint Saigor Brown over this. They're a, a really good paint to use for, for fur and hair. And then to fade it to black at the end, I'm just using the Contrast Paint Black Templar. Using a lot of GW paints on this model, I realised as I'm talking through it, which I guess is kind of apt, um, as I imagine that Kim dude used a lot of them back in the day too. Obviously not these ones. And I'm just dry brushing a little bit of that Ulthuan Grey mixed in with the Rhinox Hide, so a lot of the Ulthuan Grey, just to give us a quick highlight. I hate the finish that's given me uh, alongside the contrast paint. I don't like the finish on that either. So I've just given the whole bit of pelt there a coat with the Ammo by MIG matte varnish. That'll just knock it back a little. For our eye lenses, I've got to go against one of my things here. It's meant to be a homage to that, that Kim's army, so I'm going to do red lenses like he did. I've base coated using corn red. Then our first highlight, I used a paint by Monument called Bold Pyrrole Red. You could use something like Evil Sun Scarlet or something. Final highlight is GW Fire Dragon Bright along the bottom edge there. And then our white dot. And for this, I always use Vallejo Model Color White. It's a nice thick white paint. I didn't have enough on my brush there on the first go but we got it on the second. You can really see them starting to come together now. This is a lot neater than I normally paint, and I wasn't going to do any battle damage, but because the decals were challenging and left me with some areas I needed to fix up, I thought easiest way to do that is with a little battle damage. So using Rhinox Hide, again, because it was on my palette, any dark brown or dark gray color would do for this. I'm going to add a little bit of chipping, a little bit of battle damage. Nothing too much, and I'm not trying to do a military model in realistic style here by any means. I am still thinking about where the damage would occur. So down by his feet, on his knees, uh, on his knuckles. But just painting along the edges, sort of stippling it on almost. Just creates a little bit of interest. I need to quickly edge highlight the black on the bolter casing. So for this, uh, I base coated it with model color black and I'm edge highlighting it by just mixing in a little bit of that Ulthuan Grey into the black again. You can mix this up and, and do this when you do it. It's such a tiny area. If your mix is ever so slightly different on the next bolter you do, you're not going to notice. Over all the silver metal parts, I've made a wash up, uh, an oil wash, just like we made the one up earlier for pin washing. This is just burnt umber oil wash. And I'm washing this all over all the silver parts of the model. It's a really nice way to give us some shading. Just makes it look a little bit dirty and grimy. I'm going to pop it on the gold as well, just gives a bit more definition. And then on the areas where I've done a lot of battle damage, I just pin wash a little bit of this brown in as well just to give the illusion of a bit of mud. The final step, once the oil wash is dry, 
is just to take a nice bright silver, so in this case I've used GW Ironbreaker, and put a few little high edge highlights on, on the silver areas as well. Just helps bring back some of that reflectiveness that we've dulled down a bit with the oil wash. Stuck him on his base. The only thing on there I haven't mentioned how I painted was the purity seal, but if you check out the tutorial I did on the Blade Guard Ancient model from the Indomitus set, I've just used exactly the same technique as I did there. I was conscious this video is already running longer than our normal army painting videos, but I think it was worth it. I'm really pleased with how he's come out. It's not the normal style that I like to paint in, but I think as a, a little nod to that army by Kim, and also to make a, a very 40k looking Space Wolf as opposed to a 30k looking Space Wolf, I think we've succeeded. A lot of the effort went into the armour, as I think it has to do when you're army painting Marines. It's such a big part of that model. But the Space Wolves have got all these other little knickknacks and uh, a lot of different decals and symbology you can do on them. They are going to take you a little bit longer, I think, than your other classic Marine chapters. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, hit the like button. And if you've loved it, hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell to get notified of when our next video is coming, which for the walls is going to be very, very soon. And I'll see you next time.